In this video, we will take a look at the options available for a column to ensure accuracy and validity of what is entered in the column. You will also be introduced to a few built-in system functions that can provide flexibility in creating validation formulas. To see these options, I'll go in as if I was creating a new column here, choosing the List tab, and then Create Column. The column type selected by default is a single line of text. I'll leave it at that for now. And then we'll go down here and look at the additional column settings. This first option, requiring that the column contains information, when set to Yes, will not allow a new item to be added to the list unless data has been entered in that column. The Enforce Unique Values option will prevent duplicate values from being entered in the column. This is available for both numeric and text columns. Let's say you have a list where each employee is entered, with one of the columns being Employee ID. You can use this option to make sure each employee has a unique ID number. For text columns, you can limit the number of characters. The default is 255, which is the maximum number of characters allowed in a text field. Let's say the column was for state abbreviations. You could set the maximum to two characters, forcing users to use the two character abbreviations. Now I'll change the column type to number, get some other options. For number columns, you can specify a minimum or maximum value for the column, or specify both to identify a range of values that can be entered. And that would prevent any number that does not meet that criteria from being entered in the column. New with SharePoint 2010 is column validation. I'll click the plus here to expand that section. You define a formula to validate the data entered in the column. The formula for the column validation must be a logical expression that returns a true or false result. If the result of the formula is false, which means it did not pass the validation test, then SharePoint will not allow it to be entered. You can also specify a user message when the validation fails, telling the user why the column entry is not valid. We'll take a look at two examples of creating a validation formula. These formulas will also demonstrate using built-in system functions to help create the logical expression to result as either true or false. For this first example, I'm working on the IT site, and specifically with the task list. We're going to add a column validation to the start date column to ensure that start dates fall on or after the current date. So first we'll go up to the List tab, and then to List Settings. I'll scroll down to the columns and open the start date column. Then I'll expand the column validation section at the bottom. For this formula, we'll use a system function named today to compare the start date with the current date. Our formula will basically say that the start date being entered must be greater than or equal to today's date. We'll start creating this formula by first clicking inside the formula box and we start with entering the name of the column start date and the column name must be in square brackets. Case of the letters does not matter. We follow that with the greater than equal to sign and that's followed by the today function. So we'll enter the function name today followed by a set of parentheses. For most functions, information is provided in the parentheses, but there isn't any information for the today function, so the parentheses are empty. So our formula is complete. The next thing we can do is add a user message. This is the message displayed to the user if they enter a date that is prior to the current date. So I've entered the message a user will see if they enter an invalid date. So click OK to save the settings. And we'll test this going to the task list and I'll enter a task and I'll just call this test task and we'll go right down to the start date and you see it does default to the current date I'll choose save and I don't get the error message. Now I'll edit that task and I'll change the date to a day prior to today, put in for July 20th, click on save, 
and you'll see it does not save it and displays the message I provided in red. And I'll just cancel from here. For this next example, we'll be working with the fundraising events list. We'll add an event code column to the list. All event codes are five characters in length. We'll create a validation formula that will only accept event codes entered if they are five characters long. So we'll add this new column by going to the list tab and then clicking create column. The column name will be event code. I'll leave this as a single line of text and I'll go down to the column validation section. Click in the formula box. We'll use a system function in the validation formula named len, which stands for length, that counts the length or number of characters entered in the column. The formula basically says, is the length of the event code entered in the column equal to five characters? If not, then the error message displays. So we begin the formula with the function name len, which is followed by a set of parentheses. In the parentheses, we reference the column name event code. The column name must be enclosed in square brackets. Then I close the parentheses and the length of the event code must be equal to five characters. Then I'll enter the user message. Again, this message only displays when an event code will be entered that is not equal to five characters. Then I'll select OK to save. You see the new column entered at the far right here. So I'll edit one of these events, adding an event code. The new field is added to the bottom. I'll click inside the box. First I'll enter a code with exactly five characters. Save it. And it accepts it. I'll enter an event code for this next item that is not five characters long. I'll just enter four characters. Save it. And I get the error message that it must be five characters. Then I'll enter too many characters try to save that, the same message. So it must be exactly five characters long. And then it accepts it. So just a note about when you're creating these validation formulas, you can only reference the column it's being created for as seen in these examples. The formula cannot reference other columns in the list. For more information about these functions and others, Go to the SharePoint Help, click on SharePoint Foundation 2010, and then choose Formulas and Functions.